this distance down here, we want to maintain as even as possible. My rule of thumb is that you'd want about a nickel's thickness from the substrate to the screen. So right now it looks a little bit thicker than a nickel because once you put a shirt on there, it should be about a nickel's thickness. That is something you have to change every time if you got different thicknesses of shirts. On a lot of automatics, you might only have three or four off contacts you can actually adjust to. Uh, other automatics will have uh, settings where you can have, I've seen up to like 15. Most manuals are going to have just one that you can completely adjust however you want to. So this is a one that we can just raise the whole thing up or raise the whole thing down and we've got tilt control as well. So if I was doing this on t-shirts, I'd want it to be about a nickel's thickness, which is what I had started at, but a hoodie would be a lot thicker. So you'd want to raise that up and make sure that once again, you're about a nickel's thickness off the hoodie. If you don't have proper off contact, what will happen is the screen will not get its proper peel. And so it'll actually hold up. So a lot of times you see white ink that after you print it, it kind of looks like a stucco ceiling. It looks like it's got like little fingerlings coming up off of it. Most of that's coming from it being down onto the ink and it's not actually shearing and peeling off when the squeegee runs by it, it should pop off on its own. If it's staying stuck to it, you're peeling it off and it's holding on to the screen and peeling up. And that causes some nasty looking whites. So off contact is important to make sure you're getting a good peel rate and that you're actually giving it space to drop the ink down. Sometimes water-based printing, you might want to print on contact. There are reasons for on contact printing, but for plastisol printing, we're good rule of thumb is a nickel's thickness on all four edges of the screen to the palette. What about screen tension? How does that come into play? Oh, massive. If your screen tension is different from one, two to three to four, that off contact will play quite into there because if you've got a looser screen tension, as the squeegee comes down, it's actually forcing the mesh forward, because we're pulling forward, and it can make it so it doesn't line up one to one, might not line up, might bend over farther and cause lineup issues. So make sure that when you're doing jobs, you've got your screens either all the same tension, or if you've got some older screens you don't want to get rid of quite yet, put them with each other. So you've got some 18 Newton screens, put them together. Don't try to put an 18 Newton screen with like a 30 Newton screen and try to get them to line up perfectly. You're gonna be fighting yourself a lot. How often do you find people don't have their off contact like on point? Is that something you see a Incredibly lot? Incredibly frequently. Yeah. Incredibly frequently. Most shops will just kind of keep it jacked all the way up and just over oversaturate by adding a bigger choke or bigger stroke and just lay down too much ink. Or they'll go to their hoodies and not even think about raising the off contact and then they get those nasty cement looking, stucco ceiling looking white prints that just feel disgusting and like you can you can feel it it's like a topographical map you're like what is this no you don't want that so it's it's a massive thing that is overlooked frequently and i've said it before we're definitely in an industry of variables you have to know the variables and control them and once you do you can really make the print do what you want it to do but you've got to know what those variables are and know how to control them all right off contact get it right off contact get it right <laughs> <laughs>